Dan Gaynor is with us, the Vice President T. Boone Pickens Free Market Fellow at the Business and Media Institute, Business and Media, andmedia.org is the website. His uh, Twitter is at Dan Gaynor, D-A-N-G-A-N-O-G-A-I-N-O-R. And uh, Dan, welcome back to the program. It's a pleasure to be back. I, you, an entrepreneur, I'm surprised you don't like the idea of uh, trying to use our best minds to see if they can do something better than we're doing with our educational system now. Well, I'll tell you, I have a friend, you know, back uh, almost 20 years ago, I, I started a school in New Hampshire. It's called Hunter School, hunterschool.org, if you want to see it. I remember uh, you telling me about yeah. that. And I'm, I'm still on the board. In fact, we had a board meeting last night. And uh, we're nonprofit. I've never taken a penny out of that organization. I've put a lot of pennies into it <laughs> because we take donations. Um, and and I, I guess being a board member these days means you, you donate liberally. but um, Or conservatively, depending. Yeah, yeah, as the case may be. But uh, the, the fact of the matter is that as a nonprofit corporation, we pay salaries to people, but they're reasonable salaries that, the, you know, that is what the marketplace is for teachers, psychologists, child care workers, therapists, and things like that. But there's nobody saying, uh, no, you can't buy extra books for the kids because I want to make sure that my stockholders are satisfied with the dividend that they're getting every month, uh, with the profit distribution checks that are sent to them. And, and, the, and we don't have a CEO who's coming to the board of directors saying, uh, I want a, uh, a compensation committee on the board to determine whether my salary should be a million or three million. I mean, we're seeing this in the healthcare industry. I think that healthcare, like education, should be considered part of the commons. It should be a public good. And you've got, you know, Stephen J. Hemsley taking now. I guess it's a billion dollars. His predecessor took 1.7 billion out of United Healthcare. I think that's obscene. And when this starts well, happening in education, you're going to have the same problem. I predict. For it to be a public good, it has to be done. It's not being done well. The United States ranks 20th. According to international, international rankings, China, Singapore, Korea, you know, you go down the line, we're not there. We're, well, we're de down it, much further this after decades of the public school system being run without anybody running something against it, you know, to make it get better. Dan? So why don't we have, in this case, New Jersey, you, know, you left out the key point, that these are five failing schools. Yes. So, you know, so I mean, somebody who's got a profit motive there isn't going to do much worse than failing. Uh, if they do better, great. If they don't, then they get kicked out, too. I don't see why the left is opposed to, you know, tearing, uh, you know, not tearing down the idea of public education, but tearing down, you know, the public uh, control of the education. Why, why two, not have charter two schools? Reasons. Why not have vouchers? If you're, if you're genuinely asking that as a question, I'll give you two, two answers, and I'll do it short. Um, okay. the, the first is that our problem isn't our failing schools. The problem is inequality and poverty. In the 1950s, the 1960s, the 1970s, and the, in the early 1980s, we did not have failing schools. We had the best schools in the world. Public schools, elementary schools, we had the best schools in the world. And what was different between then and now is that at that point in time, poverty wasn't as pervasive, particularly after the, the 60s with LBJ's uh, war on poverty, where he cut poverty in the United States in half in four years. So poverty wasn't as bad. And wealth inequality, the average CEO in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s made 30 times what the average worker does. Now in some industries, it's 50,000 times what the average worker makes the in, the, in the financial services. Used. The schools also weren't used as elements of propaganda like they are right now. It's, for it's got nothing to do with that, agenda. Dan. When you have and poverty and when you have inequality, you're, you're going to see social problems. You're going to see teenage birth spike. You're, you're going to see a drug abuse spike. You're going to see crime spike. No, you're going to you see, and you're going to see schools nations. fail. Look and it's got nothing to do with the schools themselves. It's the Look culture. China. China has a lot of poverty, but they still rank. They're kicking our butts. They, why are they they're kicking not kicking our butts, our butts in their poor areas. They're kicking they're, our butts in their wealthy areas. They go, they go to school 41 more days a year. They average about 30% more education. They start at age three. They're learning. Dan, this is not true for the whole country of China, and you know it. They're, they're learning physics in grade school. Dan, and this is this is these are the, the NEA controls the school system and is, is more focused on pushing propaganda than it is educating kids. Properly. The NEA, the NEA was there in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, Dan, too, yeah, and when we had the best schools in the world. And by the way, China is not allowing anybody to make a buck off their schools. Right, but it doesn't. But so doesn't that blow up your argument? No, it doesn't. We're, if they have wonderful we're, schools, we're failing the way we're doing it right now. I'm suggesting we try another way. That's usually what what seeing and rational people do. You know, I'm suggesting money. that we solve the problem rather than the symptom. The problem is poverty and inequality. If we solve that, you're going to see teenage pregnancy rates 
go down. You're going to see you're going to see uh, mental illness rates go down. You're going to see drug abuse rates go down. You're going to see car incarceration rates go down, and you're going to see our schools start to improve. And it's, it's just that funded. simple. You can see it. You're I can show you any anywhere in the world. Stuff. Any you pick the country, I can show you on a graph over time how as inequality gets worse, school outcome gets worse. As inequality gets better. That is is reduced. School outcome improves. More than sixteen thousand dollars per student in D.C. We spend uh, one of the most unequal cities in the Utah. world. We we spend less than less than seven in Utah. I, I'd rather send my I know people teach in Utah. I'd rather send my kids to Utah than than to D.C. Dan, if you I, go to the if you go to the website, um, inequality. Plan, if if you go to the website, your plan would take decades to implement. Dan, if you go to the website, equalitytrust.org.uk, uh, equalitytrust.org.uk, it's a British website, they took each state in the union and broke them down, state by state, and compared how, you know, the disparity in incomes in that state, or wealth in that state, versus a whole bunch of social indices, including performance in school. And what you find is that the more equal states, where you don't have high levels of inequality, like Vermont, New Hampshire, Utah, um, what was the state you just mentioned? Utah. Utah, okay. It's right up there. You know, it's one of the, it's one of the more equal states. You don't have such huge disparities in wealth. Will there's Their schools do better than states like Mississippi or Louisiana, where you've got a small number of so very rich people, particularly Alabama. Long strategy. My strategy can start this fall. Which well, so could mine. Things? Roll back the Reagan tax cuts. You, know, you roll, roll back the Reagan tax cuts, our schools will start to work again. That won't do anything for the fall. That won't do anything for the fall. You're talking about failing school systems right here in D.C. You, know, you see it, I see it every day in the news. This is one of the most unequal places in the country, Dan. You but know this. It's, it, 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 it costs two, dollars $3,000 a month just to get an apartment in this city. I mean, I'm, I'm talking a little pay, one. You could start new schools. You know, using charters or using vouchers, and they could be up and running by the. How fall. about how about fixing the inequality in the area? How about I raising the minimum wage? How about letting people, unions back in? Money. I mean, that's I mean, that's usually the last strategy is to take every. How about taxing the rich? At, you know, Tom, that taxing doesn't solve everything. I it, know you think it does. It actually it does. did in the fifties, sixties, seventies, and eighties. Thousand dollars per pupil in D.C. That doesn't solve everything. Okay, I'll let you have the last word on that. Dan Gaynor, Vice President, T. Boone Pickens, Free Market Fellow at the Business and Media Institute, businessandmedia.org, and uh, Twitter at Dan Gaynor, D-A-N-G-I-N-O-R. And I got that right, Dan? No, you got that wrong again. D-A-N-G-A-I-N-O-R. G-A-I-N-O-R. I'm sorry. Exactly. I'm That's sorry. Okay. Thank, Thank you very you. much.